Chapter 10. No. For the next two days, I went on a rampage. If I saw a little kid with a Twinkie I wanted, I snatched it from him. If I saw a little kid on a swing, I pushed him off whether I wanted to use it or not. I laughed in class during silent reading. The teacher told me to stop. I kept laughing. She gave me a detention after school. My first ever detention. I laughed all through it. Instead of putting candy wrappers in my pocket, I threw them in the street. I walked across people's front lawns. I rang doorbells and ran. My mother put a new box of Klondike bars in the freezer. I ate them all. I stuck chewing gum on my bedpost. I left my dirty clothes on the floor. The next time Bubba bared his fangs and went, Wat, 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 I said, That's my name. Badness is my game. And I tied him to the bathroom doorknob. I snuck up on Zipper Nose. She was in her room lying on her stomach on the floor, reading, wearing socks. I pounced. I plunked myself smack on the back of her legs. In a second, I had her socks off. Most times when I tickled her, I would stop when she started screaming. This time, I didn't stop. She laughed and screamed and bawled herself blue. I didn't stop until my father pulled me off. He shook me by the shoulders. What's getting into you lately? Nothing, I said. Just getting her back. What was getting into me? Even I didn't know. Didn't care either. All I knew, whatever it was, it felt good. It felt great. Why had I waited until so late in life to have my first rampage? Joey was right. Angels finish last. No more last for me. This dude was heading for the gold medal. I ran upstairs. I pointed at Winky. You're holding me back, I told him. You're out of here. I opened my window and punted him into the backyard. There was only one thing left to do. My chance came next morning. As I was getting ready for school, my mother poked her head into my doorway. Pick up this floor before you go, she said. It's a war zone. She was already gone from the doorway when I sent my answer. I don't have time. She appeared again. Pardon? I don't have time, I repeated. It'll only take a minute. Make time. After school, I said. Now, she said. No, I said. Before she recovered from the shock, I was past her and down the steps. I'll see you when you come straight home after school, she called as I breezed out the door. The next voice I heard was a whole lot different. I was half a block up the street when I heard it, behind me. Hi, Suds. I turned. Not that I had to turn to see who it was. I could have picked Judy Billings' voice out of a million. She was smiling. She was looking at me. I wasn't a grilled cheese sandwich after all. We walked to school together. Judy did most of the talking. She kept telling me how famous I was. Everybody was talking about me. But I was only half hearing. I was in a daze. I just kept looking at her beautiful face and thinking, man, wow, I'm walking to school with Judy Billings. I don't believe it. Well, I heard her say, could you? I snapped out of my daze. Huh? Could I what? Let a bee sit on your arm like Joey Peterson did? Sure, I said. No sweat. For Judy Billings, I would have let an alligator sit on my arm. But we couldn't find any bees. So she said, how about a spider? Why not, I said, playing cool, trying not to sound nervous. We started searching the gutter and sidewalk and the walls of people's houses. I spotted a couple of spiders, but I didn't say anything. Then Judy called, here, look. It was on somebody's brick wall. It wasn't a little ho white house spider. It wasn't little and it wasn't white. It was poking along toward a window. Just put your hand there in front of it, Judy said. Let it crawl right on. She was excited. Her eyes were wide. Her voice was squeaky. Could be a black widow, I said. So, she said, it won't bite unless you're mean to it. She was staring at me, waiting. The last 10 minutes had been the best 10 minutes of my life. Was I going to give it all up because I was too chicken to touch a stupid insect? I put my hand on the wall, flat. The spider went around it. I did it again. The spider climbed aboard. Judy shrieked, yow! She pulled on my other arm, come on! Where, I said. School, they have to see. By the time we got to the schoolyard, the spider was up around my elbow, a tiny-footed nightmare on my skin. Judy called, look, everybody, look! 
Kids came running. They jerked to a stop when they saw. They gasped. They gawked. It's a black widow, she announced to them. He's doing it for me. The spider was up on my shoulder now, heading for my back. I couldn't see it anymore. I kept my face cool, but I was praying. Please don't go on my neck. Especially don't go down my shirt. The bell rang. Everybody ran for the door. Nobody was looking. I swatted and twisted till I was sure the spider was gone. At morning recess, I was mobbed. Wow, suds. A black widow. Black widow man. Weren't you scared? Ooh, suds. Judy was mobbed too, mostly by girls. He did it for you? I guess we were both famous.